Welcome to our video all about pumpkins. The first thing I'm going to talk about today is the history of pumpkins. Now the cultivation of pumpkins goes back over 7,000 years. They were first cultivated in Mexico and one thing to remember is they didn't look anything like the bright shiny orange spheres you see today. The first recipe in English can be traced back to 1670 in New England, America. They came to this country some time after that. The tradition of carving pumpkins is a relatively recent one. Before pumpkins were carved, it could be traced back to Ireland where jack-o'-lanterns were made using turnips. We're also going to talk today about growing pumpkins. If you want to give this a go at home, there are a few helpful tips that you need to remember if you're going to give it a go next year. First off, if you're short on space and you want to grow lots of crops, you can grow your pumpkins alongside sweet corn. The same goes for squashes and courgettes and marrows. The second tip, if you're going to grow pumpkins, they like lots and lots of water and lots and lots of nutrients. So the best way to grow them is to dig a hole, a circular hole, approximately 60 centimeters across in each direction and probably about 30 centimeters deep. Plant the pumpkin in that, but you must wait until things have warmed up outside because pumpkins aren't actually hardy. The clue there is the fact they come from Mexico. You know when your pumpkin is ready to harvest because its skin should have changed a darker shade of orange, although that does vary depending on the variety you've grown. And normally the leaves will have been just touched by the first frost. And you can see here on this leaf that the brown edges there show that it has indeed been caught by the frost. Now, if you're not gonna carve your pumpkin and you're gonna pick it to keep it over winter and pumpkins do keep really, really well, the thing to remember is you need to pick it using a good pair of pruners and you need to leave a good length of stalk on the plant. So I'm gonna pop in here and pick this one now. Here we go, this year's prize pumpkin. And I'll hand that over Thank you. to Bethany. And now we're gonna go and carve it. Let's go. Here we are with the pumpkin we've just picked. We've actually trimmed the stem off because we're not keeping it. Um, but if you do want to keep it, you want to leave a bit of stem on, as Ian said earlier, it just helps them keep a bit longer. Um, we've rinsed it off, all of the mud, because you can see the pale bit where it was. Um, and I've just got an old towel to dry it down because you don't want it to be slipping around when you're carving it. So have an old towel with you for when you're carving. You can roll it up and depending on the surface you're carving on, um, make it into a ring just so that the pumpkin doesn't move about too much when you're carving it. Other things you'll need are a bowl for the innards, um, some knives, sharp knives, so please be careful with them and if you're a child that's doing this make sure you've got an adult with you. Um, a metal spoon is best for scooping out the insides. You'll also need um, a template. Uh, luckily here at Wakefield Museums we've got one especially made for you so if you'd like to make a pumpkin of Ilbert our dragon you can download this at our blog. The details will be at the end of the video for you to download it. So that's our template. You'll need some pins. This is to secure the template to the pumpkin, but also to pick, prick out the outline so that you can see what design you are doing. And optionally is cinnamon, and I'll show you why we're going to use that later. One last thing is some tea lights to light up the inside when you finish carving. The first thing to do when you're carving a pumpkin is cut the top off. Um, we've actually got slightly wonky pumpkin, but the ones you get in the shops are usually a little bit straighter, so it's easier to cut the top off. You want to find the stalk, obviously that's the top. Um, make sure it's secure on the bench, and then get your sharp knife and go in with the first cut at a 45 de degree angle. This is so that when you cut the top off, it's got something to stand on, rather than just falling straight into the pumpkin. So you need to really make sure to get round it. Actually, this, this knife is not sharp enough. 
I'm going to change knives. And as I say, make sure you're being really careful as you do this. So that's the top. Now you're going to have to just exert a bit of force and pull the top off. Now you can see this one's actually quite thick inside, so we are going to carve out those sides in a second. But we're just going to put that to one side and go with the top. So you need to flatten this off, first of all. It just makes it a lot easier during the whole process to flatten the top off. Be very careful with the knives. Put that in your bottle. Now the next thing to do is if you're going to put real tea lights in you need to make a little slit in the top for the heat and um, smoke to come out of like this. It also helps you line up the pumpkin, the top with the pumpkin. So when you've done you should have a slit at the top and a removable lid. I've actually started taking out the insides here. Um, this pumpkin has really thick walls. I think it's probably because it's homegrown. Um, so you just want to thin those off a little bit. It'll make carving a lot easier for starters. But also it'll make getting the insides out a lot easier as well. Now I'm afraid there's no way to avoid getting your hand in here. Um, so you might want to wear gloves. But basically you get a shut up metal spoon or something quite sturdy, you get in there with the spoon and you scoop all of the innards off of the walls. You do have to get your hand in and pull the stuff out and just pop that in your bowl. These are usable, you can dry the pumpkin seeds out and grow pumpkins next year, you can make pumpkin pie with the innards and things like that, um, but we're not going to do that today. So I'm going to carry on doing this and I'll see you when I've finished. We're just finishing scooping out the insides and as you can see we've got a nice hollow pumpkin now. Now the next thing to do is to choose which side you're going to carve on. Um, I'm going to carve here because it's just the flattest and uh, it's not discoloured or anything. So I'm going to carve on this side. Now I need to thin out this wall behind it just because it'll make it easier to carve and also the light will shine through a lot better. Okay, so I'm going to get my spoon and go around the edges and just thin out the flesh around that area. Uh, now for the fun bit. So we're going to carve this face here. You need to get your template. As I say, this one will be available for download from our blog. And you need some drawing pins. You can also use sailor tape, but we've got drawing pins. So make sure to be careful with the pins first off and just pin it in the place that you want to. Like this. Now depending on your design you may need to uh, manipulate the paper a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't lie quite flat just like this one's not quite doing but we can sort that out as we go around. Let's just adjust that. And you see his mouth isn't quite laying flat, but actually if you just manipulate it a bit, it will look fine. I'm going to take these two out and just... As long as the actual black parts are flat on the pumpkin, it doesn't matter about the white parts because we're going to cut those off. Okay, so he's secured to our pumpkin. The next thing to do is get another drawing pin or a knife if you're an adult and you need to go around the design with the drawing pin just making dots into the pumpkin like this all this means is that when you take the paper off you'll be able to see that your, your design uh, underneath and then you don't need to keep the paper on for carving make sure to push right into the flush As you go around, and make sure 
to properly define any corners like just here so put a dot there and any small bits like these eyes you want to be careful going around so we'll cut to me having finished doing that just finishing up going around the design with a pin so that's all done now now the next thing is optional uh, but first remove your design from the pumpkin um, I'd recommend leaving it stuck in at one side just while you peel it off. Now you can see, actually we've got a pretty good outline on this one, uh, but depending on your design it might be quite intricate. So if you want to, you can then go around your dots, joining them up with a pen. It just may help it a little bit easier to see. Okay, I'm actually not going to do that with most of it because we've got a pretty good outline on it. Okay. So we've got our outline, uh, all that's left to do is carve it. Um, now depending on your, de your design, you actually want to start with the smallest details. This is because if you're going to take loads of big details out of the design first, you're going to weaken the structure. And then when you come to do the smaller details, when you're pressing in, you might collapse the pumpkin. As it is, all of ours are a pretty decent size. So I'm going to start with this antennae up here. So be very careful going round with the knife and again depending on the, the design you might want to take sections out at, at a time rather than trying to cut round one whole piece. Don't worry if you do make a few scoring marks as you go round, they're probably not going to be visible when you are finished. So this first piece I think is ready to come out, so there we go, that's the first piece out. So you can see how the thinning out really helped to aid with the carving. And don't be afraid to exert a bit of force, they can take it. That's the next bit out. Now as you can see with the carving, when you come around here, the light isn't going to show through there very well. So you may want to go into the back of the pumpkin or do it from the front and just carve bits away to make it easier for the light to come out. And it'll make your pattern a bit more uh, defined as well. Like that. So I'm going to carry on doing this for all of the bits of the pumpkin. And I'm going to go in and tidy it up around the back so that the light shines through properly. I'm just finishing up with carving. I'm just thinning out the back a little bit more so that the light's going to come through properly. And then all there's left to do is just empty what we've carved off into the bowl. So there's your pumpkin carving. Let's move all of this out of the way. You might want to just give it a wipe to remove any of the bits. Clean it up a little bit. Now there's a couple of things you can do to make it last longer. Um, if you bathe it in bleach, if you're an adult, it'll make it last a little bit longer um, through to Halloween. The other thing you can do um, if you'd like a really nice smelling uh, smell when you put the candle in is sprinkle some cinnamon just round the top and uh, it'll make it you know, um, really smell really nice. Um, the other thing to be mindful of is if you've got a candle in here don't leave the top on for too long because you could set light to the underside of the pumpkin okay so all that's left to do is light it up so we'll go do that now we've come into a little bit of a darker place now just so you can see it better so i've got a tea light in here take the top off just put that down at the front. now please be careful get an adult to light the candle for you because this will be hot You can alternatively get battery operated ones, which might be better. Put that in there. Stick the top on. Bit of a jigsaw puzzle trying to get it on. And then we'll turn off the lights. And there you can see a perfect jack-o'-lantern ready for Halloween. 
happy Halloween from Wakefield Museums and Capitals.